Welcome back guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're looking at exit strategies for cryptocurrency. It's a highly requested topic and especially as the market continues to drag on, people are wondering when they should be exiting. So in this video, I want to run through how to exit, where to exit, why you should have an uh, exit plan and what it is that you can do after you have exited your position. So make sure you've hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, plenty more content like this. And I also have examples, real life examples, as the market progresses on how I am using an exit plan through the cryptocurrency market. So make sure you smash that subscribe button and bell notification icon and all so you get the updates. I will show you an example in today's video as well. So I do have a lot more content on the channel in regards to exit strategies and setting up portfolios as this is what I do full time. I've been doing it for over 11 years in the stock market and commodities market and also 15 years in property. So there is a bit of background to this, but I'll try and keep it as high level as possible, just nice and light so you can get a grasp of what's going on and what I'm thinking on how you can create your own plan. And then as I said, there are playlists on the channel plus further education as well, which you can find in the description down below. So uh, best crypto exit strategies revealed when to sell your Bitcoin and altcoin profits. There are so many videos online about it. Let's see if we can decipher what it is that we need to do without all of the jargon. So the first thing I have here is why do I need an exit plan? A lot of people may think that you should just buy and hold cryptocurrency forever. That is also an option. There is also the possibility that the market will come crashing down. And there is also the possibility that some of the cryptocurrencies will in fact just blow up and be worth nothing. We have seen this in history already, uh, having been in the market since around April of 2017 many of those cryptocurrencies no longer exist. And it is still possible that a lot of what is in the top 10 may not exist in the future as well. Or if they do, it'll be on some really low price range, which is just not being used because it just has not had the uptake from the market that people were expecting. So why do I need an exit plan? Well, of course, you want to take profits. Most people are here to take profits. There aren't that many people in it for the tech anymore as what there was when we first started. You want to enjoy those profits? Personally, I always make the point to go out and enjoy the money that you have made from the market. Hopefully, you're making some money as opposed to enjoying that ridiculous ride up into the moon where everyone is on the on board at the end of the ride. Personally, I'd rather go and take those physical profits and go and put them into something that I enjoy, whether it's an experience or a physical possession. That is entirely up to you, but go out and enjoy those profits so that you uh, feel rewarded for the time and the energy you've put into this market. It's also extremely difficult to think rationally when your money is on the line. So when you have an exit plan, something written down, it makes things so much easier. You can action it knowing that you have already set this up for particular reasons. The market has a cycle, doesn't go on forever. We don't go up forever, unlike what moon boys want you to think. They're there to take the money from you and, and sell you on a hope and a dream. That's essentially what most of these cryptocurrencies are. They're hopes and dreams because there's nothing physical. We just have to be real with ourselves, especially when we're creating a plan. Set some goals, always set goals. You might have price ranges, you might adjust those goals as I've got here. You can change them as you grow because that's what happens as you become a more experienced investor or trader, you're going to want to change those goals because they might not meet uh, your expectations of when you started. As a new investor, we might think we're smarter than the next person. Can I beat the market? And really, it is just a musical chairs game. We're just trying to make sure that someone else buys this thing that we have bought before for more than us later on. And when you think about it, that's exactly what all investing is at this point in time. We look at property, you want property prices to go up more and you want someone else to pay more for it because you believe it should be worth more in the future. Same with stocks and businesses. We're not really producing anything at this point. So let's just bring ourselves back and be a little bit more realistic. You want to get the profits from the game at the end of the day and hope to see that the technology continues on in the future because it is here for a purpose. Now, there is whales in the market. There is smart money. There is professional, expert, technical analysts. There are insiders, all these people are versing the retail and they're versing each other. They have the most money. Retail has the least amount of money, but they're going to take what they want to take. They don't care about their emotion, other people's emotions or feelings or goals that you want to 
purchase a property for your mum or your family. They don't care about those things. They're here for their goals. You should be here for your goals as well. So everyone is playing against each other at this point in time. That's why I don't think it's a great idea to try and always beat the market in terms of trying to sell the top and buy the exact bottom. Now, as a new investor, we often think, what if I'm wrong? What if I didn't sell the top? How stupid am I going to look? It honestly doesn't matter. Do you think that the professional money is trying to sell the exact top and buy the exact bottom? Of course, they're trying to get as close as they can, but they're trying to take a huge chunk of profits out of the middle and whoever's pocket that comes from, they don't care. So for me and the way I like to explain it is we just need to try and get over our ego as much as possible. Forget what the next person is saying. Doesn't matter if you don't sell the top. Doesn't matter if you didn't sell uh, anywhere near the top. If you're making a profit and that suits your purpose and your goals, then you're going to be winning at the end of the day because you can improve on that. So as long as you're learning and you're improving for the future, provided you are considering staying in this market long term or making investing a long term career for yourself. So the market can keep going up and it can go past our targets and we just have to be comfortable with that. The same deal on the market on uh, for the market on the way down. The market can keep falling and we thought that was the bottom and we bought as long as we are making a chunk out of the middle and we are buying for lower than we're selling for, then we're going to come out with a profit. And I'm going to talk about some particular exit strategies in a moment. People often ask for exact price targets and when will this happen? These two sorts of things will send a new investor absolutely broke. If you're listening to people tell you there is going to be a set price and an approximate date, probably going to lose because if it doesn't get there, and you're waiting for it, you might miss the signals on the way down. You might miss that the market is actually falling and you're in this hope state that the market is going to keep going up. So the way I like to look at it is FIB targets and we'll look at those in exit strategies. I'll track what the monthly history has done and also track some fear and greed analytics. And we talk about it quite specifically on the channel. Now, a really common comment I get is, can't we just wait for the top and we just wait for the signal? What is the signal that's going to tell us the exact top? Unfortunately, there is no exact signal, but we do track the markets and the more advanced and the more experienced you get in the markets using different sorts of technical uh, analytics. And if you're getting into your fundamentals and understanding the market sentiment, you can get closer to the top, but that generally comes with time in the market. So if you're new to it, be comfortable, be happy with taking a chunk out of the middle of the market and moving on and waiting for the next opportunity. So you can sell some before the top, you can sell some after. As long as you're making some profits, you're going to walk away pretty happy after you see that bear market come through and destroy a lot of people. Now onto the practical exit strategies and you can see them all here and I'll show you them on the chart in just a moment. So we have trailing stops as the first one. We have breaks of support, price targets hit so you can ladder out on those. Dollar cost average out and this isn't a percentage or a dollar amount so very similar to price targets except now you can dollar cost average in terms of a percentage exit initial investment risk-free and I've specifically looked at this on the channel as well. I've gone through a live example and I did not get the top but I got a good chunk out of the market and then there are more advanced exit strategies and, and also entries as well using GAN analysis which again swings and also Wyckoff volume analysis but we'll stick to the easy stuff for this video. So let's start with trailing stops. So this is the Bitcoin chart on a log scale. So trailing stops, what you could do here is look at the entire bull market. So this is the bull market from 2015 into 2017. And so you want to trail your stops a percentage beneath the tops. As the market keeps going up, look for a percentage on the way down and say, well, the market moved as far as 40% in a bull market. I'm going to leave my stops at 40% beneath every single weekly bar top. So this might be getting a little bit more technical for people, but if you want something that could get that much closer to the market, give that a crack. You want to get as close as you can to the top and then start to implement other rules and strategies on top. So you can see that the market ran up and then when the market went 40% down, you were exited out of the market at about $12,000. Now that sounds crazy that you didn't get the $20,000 top, but when you see what happens next from 12,000 down to 3,200 or 3,100, it doesn't seem so bad after all. But the main factor in that is time and you had to wait out about a year to get to that low. So put that in your plan as well, that sometimes these bear markets take a very long time and you just have to be patient. Now, break of support is quite similar as well, but this is going to take 
your skills to get into the market, understand where the support and resistance levels are. So you might see some support and resistance come out as you see multiple highs or lows being formed at the same area. So you can see that there were many highs formed here before the market had a reaction and then also here. So you could be setting them on the way up. And as you see these levels start to break down, you can also set your stops at those levels. So that's breaking of support levels on the way up. Maybe you had another support level that was put in here as the market quickly dumped and that came out at around $11,000. That's a di another strategy as well to trail uh, the break of support levels. So price targets are another option and these can be round numbers that people look at. Maybe they're $5,000. Maybe it's $10,000, maybe it's $20,000. Of course, we're now in the next bull run. So this might be a $50,000, a $100,000, an $80,000 Bitcoin. You could have those levels and we'll cover the two in one hit. This is price targets laddering out. So a small position, maybe it's a 10th or a 20th of your portfolio, 10% or 20% of your portfolio as these targets are hit. And you could dollar cost average out in this method as well. The other thing to add to this is the percentage of the dollar amount or dollar amount. So you have the percentage. Maybe you are exiting 10% of your portfolio every time one of these price targets is hit. So we go up to $80,000 and you exit 10%. Then we get up to $120,000. You exit another 10% of the remaining amount. So that's the difference in the percentages compared to dollar amounts. Then it gets up to maybe $150,000 or $180,000 and you decide to exit more at these higher levels. So you could now end exit 20% because your account continues to grow higher. Now you might wanna scale these a different way because maybe the market doesn't make it anywhere close to $120,000 this cycle. Maybe it only makes it to $80,000 or $90,000. So in that case, you wanna have a few more laddering in a little lower and closer to the market, just depending on your goals. Also on the list is exiting initial investment risk-free. So. This is one that I had on the channel looking at the playlist which you can find and in this particular playlist it's Solana and I was entering Solana speaking specifically of it on the channel at around $25 to $30 and then the exit was at around $160 and I specifically put this in a video to show how that would work on a chart. So as the market climbed up and I started to see some of these levels uh, get taken out, that's where I started to put my stops as the market was coming down. So that's an easy exit and I do this in real time. So make sure you've hit subscribe on the channel so you can follow along with how I'm doing this. So in doing that, that allowed me to have a risk-free investment, meaning I was able to take out my initial capital and then I can now keep that on the sidelines for later in the cycle or I can use that to reinvest if I think the cycle is going to continue on. Now for the more advanced stuff, I have a Patreon in the link down below where I specifically talk about these sorts of strategies with the group and also a premium list as well. So you can check that out in the description, but check out the Patreon. I do this with my brother, Michael, who also has a channel and we specifically talk about laddering in and laddering out for investing short term and long term. So that's uh, in the description, top links down below. So now that we've gone through the strategies on what to do and all the different options, however you're going to put that into your plan. It's like, what should I sell my profits into? What's the best? Now I do have a video on this in more detail, but I will mention them here because it is part of a plan. So stable coins, cash, metals, property, stocks, it's just gonna depend on how much you have and of course, what your goal is at the end of the day. So you're starting to realize that it's not just about making the most amount of money and getting out of the market. It's like, what are you gonna do with this? And that is going to drive how you are interacting with the market, how, how you are placing yourself to get these gains. So stable coins, plenty of options. USDT, USDC, UST, Gemini USD, so G, G USD, Binance USD, all these have their pros and cons. Some look like they might crash, some might be here for the long term. It's really gonna depend on the news of the day. Cash, you can sh trade this back into your bank accounts. Metals, some people want to hold metals. I would be looking at the returns for these last three. Do I wanna be holding my money in stable coins and getting back into the market at a later date? Or do I think there is more potential in buying metals, property, or stocks? That is gonna come down to the individual because I can't tell you which one of these are gonna have the best returns. I'm just gonna do what I think is best and I like the cryptocurrency space. So I wanna get into crypto at a later point. For example, if I sell Bitcoin at 100,000, now I have $100,000.
Now, if Bitcoin drops to 50,000, I can now buy two Bitcoin. And then if Bitcoin rises in the next cycle to 500,000, now I've made a million dollars from that $100,000 that I sold out. The difference here is the time and I need to have patience, a lot of patience for Bitcoin because the cycles are a lot longer. And of course, you'll need an exchange to sell your cryptocurrency to. So for the Aussie guys, there is a link to SwiftX down below and there's also a link to CoinSpot as well. You can use these exchanges. I would have multiple set up just in case one of them goes down when the markets get crazy. That's the important thing here. Uh, you'll get $10 of free with each of these if you sign up. So there's another $20 of free Bitcoin if you use the links in the description down below for SwiftX and of course for CoinSpot. As the total shows, this is the ultimate cryptocurrency exit strategy. I've gone through a lot of different things here to get us to the point of getting those profits, realizing those gains. We've created a plan. We've written it down. We are looking at particular exit strategies. We're looking at how to sell out into different exchanges or making sure you have these options available. We've looked at charts. We are looking at what else you can sell it into because maybe you want to continue on with your investment journey while the cryptocurrency market isn't doing too much. So what's next? If I continue to hold cryptocurrency, I need somewhere safe to hold it. And that is in a hardware wallet. So you might choose a hardware wallet. You might choose an app to hold it in as well and get some of those sweet returns on your stable coins or even your Bitcoin and Ethereum. And so the options here, many of them are out there. But to give you a couple of ideas, there is crypto.com and there is a link to this in the description down below. Of course, there are some kickbacks to this as well. $25 of free cryptocurrency if you sign up with the link down below but on this you can receive rewards up to 14 and a half percent on your stable coins and about eight or so percent on your cryptocurrencies so check these out in the description down below you also have things like BlockFi which do very similar uh, returns and you just want to check out which ones are doing the best at the time so that's how I play between each of these different platforms. Now, if you want the hardware wallets, you can check out the Ledger Nano X. There is a link to this down below and I have videos on the channel on which wallets I prefer, as you can see from this right here. So this is the safest, best cryptocurrency wallets. Check out that. Link to this is in the description as well. Of course, you have to weigh up centralized to decentralized and which one suits your needs. There's gonna be benefits and drawbacks to each of them. Now you might be wondering, what the hell is my strategy? There is so much information I've dropped in this video. What do I do? Personally, I use something more advanced because I've been doing this for over 10 years now. I use GAN swings and that takes some practice to learn how to draw the swings. I use Wyckoff volume analysis, which I talk about on the channel, looking at bar patterns and volume. And specifically in the Investor Accelerator premium plan, the plan itself, which was recorded in 2020, you can see that we were exiting Bitcoin at $50,000 using those rules and then re-entering at $37,000. Now, this isn't all of my knowledge. It comes from GAN, WD GAN, and just how I implement that knowledge itself. So the link to premium is down below as well, the Investor Accelerator Premium. And of course, there is Patreon. So check those out down below. Now, you don't have to do any of that. You could use something far easier. But of course, when you use something a bit easier, uh, it's going to have to suit your style. So you could trail supports uh, and, and the resistance levels, set percentages to exit on the way up, and then look at euphoria. Look, look at something like a Wall Street cheat sheet to give you an idea of, is this market a little bit overheated? And are we in a fearful level to, to buy back in? You can set yourself an easier plan and just be comfortable with those returns that you're looking for. So we've covered a hell of a lot in today's video. I do have more coming up on the channel, so make sure you are subscribed and like the video if you found some value from it. Be sure to check out Patreon as well where I update the guys, the members there with our trade ideas and how I am seeing the market on a day-by-day -day basis. So my final thoughts to all of this, be open to not selling the top. That's a really big one to get over, especially for the ego. You really want to get as close as you can to the top because you'll always feel like it was a missed opportunity. But a missed opportunity is not taking profits. That's a bigger missed opportunity, in my opinion. Now, if you do make a profit, you've beaten 90% of investors. Simple as that. If you can make money from the market, you are beating the vast majority of people, regardless of what they say in comments and tell you that they've done and their paper profits if you actually take a profit, you are beating about 90% of people. Don't give up if you want to be a full-time crypto investor or trader or full-time investor in general. It does take a lot of practice and a lot of missed opportunities, a lot of costs to the market, which you can put down as 
pure education. Now the options are limitless to this entire thing. So what I've covered is just the tip of it. Check out the other video resources on the channel. And like I've mentioned many times, Patreon links are down below. And of course the premium list is down there as well. So there's no right or wrong way to do this. It just what, it's just what suits your mission and your goals. If you have reached those targets, then you've, you've succeeded. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as you wanna make it. I hope you found some value from this video. Did I miss something that you think is super important to an exit strategy? Let me know down below. As I said, the options are absolutely limitless. I am just sharing with you what has worked for me in the past and how I continue to navigate these markets moving forward. Make sure you check out the links down below for everything I've talked about on this video. I'll see you at the next video and until then, have more fun to get more done.